Alright, I'm gonna try to record this video. Excuse the noise, it's on like the highest ISO setting for this camera. But over here, you can see I have the optical fiber attached to the diagonal. I already focused it, so basically I used an eyepiece to make sure I was pointed at the right targets. Had the mount do its alignment procedure. And then I attached a secondary camera to this little guide scope. And what this does is it allows you to go into this computer. Um, and I use a program called Shark Cap. I don't know how well you can see this here. But if I bump up the exposure on that guide cam, you can see, you can start to see the stars right here. Let me make sure you can actually kind of see that, just the, the frame. Yeah, of course you can't. There you go. You can kind of see it on that small lap, or the laptop on the left. Sorry, laptop on the right. Uh, you can kind of see. Actually, you can't see because I bumped up the exposure to five seconds. That should be better. So, you can now see kind of right there that star in the middle is Cirrus, which I'm actually taking the spectra on on this laptop over here on the left. And I hope you can see this. There we go. It's a little bit dirty because I think it's drifted off frame a tiny bit. Um, and it's also straight in the power line. But you can kind of see the spectra going right there on the left. And you can see the actual um, spectra from that. Let me move you closer. But if you look closely, you can actually see some of the spectral lines on there. Of course, my tripod's messing up too. Sorry about that. Um, and so this is the telescope right here. Let me open up the aperture again. You should be able to see that. There we go. I'll angle you down. Ah. There you go. And so I also have this mount connected from the hand controller down here to this program called Stellarium. And I use an extension called Stellarium Scope. And what this allows you to do is see um, the night sky. So let's say I want to go over to Mars over here. That's just going to be up. Uh, yeah, it's right above this tree. It still should be visible. You just press Control 1 because that's the first scope that you have. And you can see from my laptop, I can just control exactly where it goes. I think you should be able to see that slewing. Make sure. Yep. It's looking good. And basically, um, it's all controlled by the laptop. And so, the reason why I did that is because Stellarium it looks nice where you have the whole sky displayed in front of you. And let me go and get you over here. You know, just the aperture really quick. And so Stellarium it just allows you to see the night sky a lot better. And so now whenever I go back over here to Shark Cap, you'll see that Mars is a little bit off. Um, not too far. So the rest I just take the hand controller and then I'll slow it around until I get it into this crosshair right here. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to design that part that allows for a better um, adjustment just to get that more accu accurately aligned because um, it is tough to get it with this guy scope up here and just have the optical fiber like that. But you'll see once I get it to the center of those crosshairs, it should display a spectra. I might have gotten this line. Okay. I'm trying to find exactly where it is because it apparently got missed. Eh, getting there. Nope, go back. Sorry for the wait, but just trying to find exactly where Mars is. Because it is not where I put it. There's another thing that would help with the 
okay okay so one thing about Mars is that it is pretty late in the season for Mars so we're not gonna get a great spectra because it's not bright um, yeah I would say show one more ball no nope, let's go back oops Oh, it looks like it went off short. I don't know. There she is again. Kinda. Go back one more bump. Mm. This is actually kinda tough. Oh, there we go. Nobody guessed where the trick was. Back to what I was saying, Mars is a little bit late in the season to be viewing much of, because um, it's kind of gone past the phase of uh, opposition. I think it's like almost out of its retrograde motion too, but we won't see it no for another two years out here, um, but at least we won't have another opposition for another two years. Man. Yeah, I guess Mars is just quite dim compared to especially Cirrus. But, um, I mean, also there is the tree right there and some power lines. So it's not optimal. Um, let me try to bump up the exposure. Another thing is that you can actually bump up the exposure on this program up to six seconds, I think. Six and a half seconds. So we'll see what this looks like. It looks a little bit cleaner. We'll go ahead and save that actually. Save. Give me a minute, because this is actually not a bad spectrum. Mars. We'll do an export as uh, CSV. So another thing is that you always want to export it as CSV also. Um, And having the CSV allows you to export it to Python, Excel, all those, and be able to actually analyze it. But you can see, right there, we kind of got Mars in those crosshairs up there. And over here, um, nope, wrong way. Yeah, you can kind of see Mars spectra over there, which is not ideal, but again, like I was saying, it's late in the season for Mars. I'll probably try some planetary nebula. Um... And this weekend I'll be bringing it out to a dark sky to be able to actually try the dark sky to see if that has any better results. Because as far as right now, if that's Mars, I do not think I'm going to be able to actually get galaxies or dim nebula. I think it's going to be pretty much just that, uh, stars and planets. I did get the moon a couple of days ago, but I forgot that this laptop over here... Uh, yeah, so I forgot that this laptop... Um, erases all the data <laughs> which I'm kind of bummed about but I mean yeah I'll, I'll show you around a little bit too and so this is gonna be way too bright this is my flash flashlight yeah that's way too bright um maybe not uh but yeah no I, I just started with the eyepieces aligning the telescope um over here and then so I started with a pretty wide eyepiece I think it was a 24 millimeter this is what I would guess 32 so it's wide angle 32 put it in the telescope just align it uh, with the remote and then after you align it with the remote then you get it up on shark cat with this uh, secondary camera over here uh, let's move you around with that secondary camera right there this, this little red camera is called a ZWO uh, guide camera and so I use that to connect to SharpCat and then you can connect the mount uh, right here this is, this is optional if you just want it to look prettier when you're slowing around and kind of more interactive especially for outreach that can help a lot because people can be like oh I want to see this and you're like oh well this is where it's in the sky so you can kind of point it out easier 
It's just great to know exactly where your scope is pointing. Um, so yeah, you need a flash drive for this other computer on the left because that one likes to erase data. And so that's pretty much it. There's also a couple drivers that you do need to get the mount working with. Um, and I updated the firmware so that you can actually get it to this laptop. Um, I think that's about it. The spectrometer is just uh, optical fiber going straight to the spectrometer, the MyTech spectrometer. And so that's pretty much my senior capstone project as best as I know it and as far as I've gone so far. The other parts for this uh, eyepiece adapter are printing. I have a two inch adapter coming in um, that I'm working on. So that should be good. And then once I get that, then you can actually align it a lot easier. And that's pretty much it actually, I think. So. That's the progress I've made on this project. Thank you.